Welcome back to the third and final part of tonight's episode. If you are just joining us, we've already finished parts one and two, where we've tried and discussed some Basil Hayden's bourbon, and we've covered the first half of Sons of Anarchy, season one, episode three, titled Funtown. Uh, I want to remind everyone to like and subscribe please be sure to leave us your questions and comments in the comment section below. Remember that you can also email us at ask at bourbonbros.tv. And as always, if your question doesn't suck, we may even answer it on a future episode. And as Ken likes to say, even if it does suck for a while anyway, we might, we might discuss it. <laughs> That's right, because we're just desperate to have somebody communicate with us. So please send us those questions. All right, Ken. Um, when we wrapped up part two, we had just finished going through the first five top moments. Mm -hmm. um, we are on to moment number six. What would you like to discuss next? Well, I, I think I think I had the last topic, didn't I? Okay, so you, what you're saying is it's my turn. It, it's oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour myself some more basil. So you go you ahead. Pour. I'm gonna top. crack it up and I'm gonna have a little bit more to top off uh, my glass. All Let's right. So I want to go to um, the club who's out doing other shenanigans. Come back to the clubhouse and grab the guns to go to the raid on the house where they think the guy that has raped this teenage girl is at. They get to the house, they open up the bag, and guess what? No clips. They basically have props. And mm -hmm. the reason they have props is because Juice passed out before he ever got a chance to load the guns. Mm -hmm. So they go in and bust through the door they run into the house. They're they're ready to like throw down. And, and this, what do they run across? It, well, this is the Nords. This is where the Nords are gathering, right? They've they suspect the Nords are involved, so they're looking for a specific individual well, affiliated with the Nords. Hold on, Darby has told them where this guy is that has a prior prior sexual yeah. offense, but he's affiliated. But he's no longer part of the Nords. The Nords. They've kicked no them out. Longer. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But he's affiliated. So th they're not expecting to find other Nords there, but when they arrive, they see a bunch of people around the house. They see weapons. They don't really know what it is. This guy who is part of the Nords has gone on to other nefarious endeavors. Mm -hmm. So they're going in expecting a gun battle and they they find something very different. Yes, they do. What do they find, Ken? They they find a preacher who's effectively leading Bible study in the yes. center of this house. So they they run in with unloaded AK forty sevens that they hope no one notices and ambush a Bible study. It and completely my, comes to a halt. That's right. It it comes to an abrupt halt. And my my favorite part of that was one word. Bang. Bang. <laughs> so well done. I love Tig so much. <laughs> He's, He's so a great good. Character. Great character. So I know it's only one word. But I couldn't let us go through this show without talking about Tig and his one-liners. Mm -hmm. And the way he delivers them is just fantastic. He's got a lot All of right. them in this series. So now it is your turn. You're on <clears throat> to uh, the next moment. Right. Well, let's go to the tough one. And it's where my blood started to pump. I don't know about yours, but... Um, <sighs> They figure out that who it is. They figure out and uh, you oh, want to back up a little bit. Are you going to the scene? The scene. Yeah. Let's talk about the scene. Okay. So, we're going there. I'm going to have another drink. <laughs> so if you back up a little bit um, at the hospital, 
Gemma finds a way to squeeze into the room where the daughter is, you know, she's, she's doing okay. Right. And she, she, she tells her what, what happened. Um, it, ter- it turns out that her family really doesn't want the word to get out of who did it. They really don't want this person to be c- caught because it will put a, a, f- a f- name and a face together and uh, their daughter will always be known as someone that was raped at Funtown. Right. They're basically trying to keep it a secret. They're trying to keep it a secret. Well, Gemma kind of, you know, unfolds reality and uh, it, it, it turns out that they're able to find out who did it. She admits that the clown at, at Funtown is the one that did it. Yeah, and real quickly, I know this is not your scene, but I just have to make a quick comment. The mm-hmm. dialogue between Gemma and Karen, the mother, mm-hmm. and oh, and yeah. Gemma basically explaining to her why keeping quiet is the worst decision mm-hmm. was masterful. Was. And for the rest of her life, in Charming, she's not going to be Tristan. She's going to be the girl who was raped at Funtown. Sweetheart, in her head, she'll always be the girl who was raped at Funtown. Very well done. Incredible. It's some of the most kind of underrated, subtle, but finest writing in this episode. Yeah, I'd agree. But carry on, because that's not your point here. Well, well, there's a lot going on here, and there's a lot that unfolds and happens. But they end up back at Fun Town. They grab the clown. Right. They right? They find out it's Dressed a clown. The clown. It's a clown. Which, and, the irony, right? Because he was in the opening scene. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't catch that. But they, they haul him off. And, again, Elliot is called. And they have him tied up. Right. You, we've done what there. you've asked us to do, yep. and here he is. We're serving him mm-hmm. up on a silver platter for you. Right, and they hand him a knife. Actually, and he brings it, his own. He, Elliot he brings brought his knife. that. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't really even a knife, was it? It more looked like a hook. It was. Yes. It, it, could, it would be painful, brutal, right? Yeah, I mean, basically, Elliot's the one that tees up the whole scene that unfolds there. And I think he has psyched himself up into doing what Clay required him to commit to, Mm -hmm. which is to take this guy's life, right? It's an eye for an eye. And, and Elliot decides that I'm going to hurt you in exactly the spot where you hurt my daughter, Mm -hmm. which is the genitals. And Mm -hmm. so I'm bringing something to exert pain Mm-hmm. And I'm going thing. to make sure that when I'm done, you will never be able to do this to another girl again. Right. Right. So we're going to remove the apparatus that you inflicted harm with. The possibility. And do you remember what happened? Yeah. Um, Elliot shows up and he has a knife. The club has him tied down and, you know, he's got a, Stuff wrapped around his face, and Elliot is supposed to now take over, take the knife, and do what he needs to do to, to, to exact revenge. And he can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... He yeah, just can't and... do it. I think he had psyched himself up, right? Like Clay had basically demanded that he was willing to do this. And Mm -hmm. I think at that point he believed he could because he was so angry. And so you see Elliot, although he psyched himself up and he knows he needs to do this and he's convinced himself that it's the right thing to do at the moment you have to act. He can't do it. He can't execute. And then we discover. Yeah. So he leaves. So he, you know, walks off, walks off the set. He's gone. And Clay jumps in and, you know. Right. He he drops the knife. So Clay picks that up. Yeah. He picks the knife up. 
and he takes care of business. So the guy thought he was getting off, but, you know, get off the hook. But, you know, just just the pain, just watching it was so painful. I don't know if you felt that, but uh, it well, was brutal. In the way that it was written and the way that it was shot, you see nothing. Mm -mm. And yet you think you've seen everything because in your mind, you're able between what was said, the sounds, everything about the way that scene was set up, written and shot. You think you've seen what's happened and it's but, horrific. Yeah, no, it is horrific, but they, they do pan They're they do. You do see what uh, the byproduct of, of what has happened on the ground briefly, if you, if you recall. Um, but the clay spins it, tells the club, let him bleed out, bury him in a shallow mark grave. And he's spinning into what is obviously a plan that he's had. Right. right? And everybody starts to clue in that it, clay knew mm -hmm. from... The moment Elliot requested their help, he would chicken out. What he was going to do. Right. So, Elliot's fingerprints are now on the knife that they're going to use, that they're going to keep. Okay. He's yeah, we discover that Clay is basically going to use this whole thing mm -hmm. as a way to blackmail Elliot. Right. So, he collects... The dismembered mint. They collect that. They have the knife. So they basically have leverage against Elliot, right? Yes. It's his knife. He brought it. Yep. He brought it. So that's where that scene wraps up. But just the emotion for me, especially the first time I saw it, like I've seen that episode before. Um, you still get, you still feel it. But the first oh, time. Oh, it's a holy yep. shit moment. Yeah, oh, it is. When you yeah, see you, that scene, it's it 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 kicks you in the nuts. It does, <laughs> literally, right? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, painful, painful to watch, but you know, he deserved it. I I, I could put myself in Elliot's shoes, and that's the outcome I would have wanted. Well, that's the thing is you you look at it, and again, I, I think there's a reason that Kurt made this character of the clown who he is, because we can all rationalize to some degree while why that was okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're willing to look the other way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very intentional on Kurt's part in terms of the way he wrote that character. And we can all relate to Elliot. And even though Clay has completely ulterior motives, there's a part of us that is glad that clown is not going to be able to hurt another girl. Mm -hmm. And so as a viewer, we're a little conflicted, but at the same time, we're willing to let it slide. And I'm just going to jump into my next moment because it ties right into this. My, my moment comes right after all of this happens. And that's where every single person there, except for Clay, is there to bring justice to this 13-year-old girl. And they've all just discovered that the reason they're actually there as a club are for very different reasons. Right. And it's Jax who as VP and who's been reading his father's journals confronts Clay. And, and that's my moment, is that scene where Jax confronts Clay. Hey, you want me to be your number two, protect this club? Then I gotta know where you're taking us. Otherwise, there's no trust. And if you and me don't trust each other, Sam Crow's got a problem. And Clay really doesn't give a shit. He doesn't. He, he's a little flippant 
right? He basically explains his like, Mm -hmm. now you know. Now you know. And you just get the sense that this is not the end of it. Right. A little bit of a power struggle that you can see shaping. Yes. And the punchline there is that, again, you said it earlier, Clay does not want old white money to control the growth of this town. So to get one up on Elliot, he needs to have him in his pocket. So That's right. And Elliot has no reason to not do this deal. Mm-hmm. Right? For Clay, there's nothing he can do to prevent Elliot from doing this deal until mm-hmm. this happens. Right. So now he has some leverage in the form of uh, some dismemberment. Let's leave it at that. That's right. And, and again, the it, just so we're not beating around the bush, like the play here is, is that Clay is taking this evidence that could potentially implicate Elliot mm-hmm. in this death, this murder, and is going to use it to prevent Elliot from selling the land that would then be developed that would allow Charming to grow and would bring more law enforcement and more people and get in the way of what Clay's trying to do. Correct. Hence the marked grave so they know where to find the body and all the other evidence. Yep. So So I I don't know what your next topic is, but I'm going to make a request. I'm going to plead my case, and that is... Could we please lighten things up a little bit? Yeah, let's let's do that. So, um, as we as we spoke about, Juice was passed out. Yes. Okay. Um, Clay ends up back at the club, and you know, witnesses Juice all after passed, having guns with no ammunition. Floor. Right after having that, and something to the fact, I don't remember what he said, but he said something to the fact of you know. Make it good. Just something right, I like want that. something Make very special. <laughs> I want something very special for him. Yes. So um, they pan to the scene um, where Juice has been dumped off outside of the police station. Oh, thank you. This is an. Yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. Great he's choice. In a, he's in a diaper and he has uh, a sign kind of uh, staple to him. You must have really pissed off your buddies. Yeah, we're we're talking not like paper staples. We're talking about like those Stanley staple guns mm-hmm. that have like those construction staple. They Ken, they <laughs> stapled the cardboard to his <laughs> chest. Yeah, and he's so it. out of it, <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, and I, I, what I love is. Juice kind of takes stock in his current situation. And it almost looks like you could see the staples pull on his skin. Like credit to the makeup, makeup artist, makeup, costume crew, whoever it was. But like you could almost feel the staples coming out. But he's in a diaper. He realizes he's in his diaper. And do you remember what he says to Hale? I gotta go. Um, I'm late for my eight o'clock feeding. He stays yeah, in just, character, just, and he and he stumbles off. It's just, it's it's comical. I, I like that. Theo Rossi, who plays Juice, God love you. Just, just love him. I'm gonna have a little more. Wrap up the evening. Just a little more. That was that okay. was a great scene, and. It kind of leads into what my final moment was, just to wrap up our top 10. And we have Agent Cone arrives in Charming, right? So you've got that scene, which if you've never, like if you were following along with us and you're just watching these episode by episode, and you're only getting to Funtown. 
No issue wow. with Agent Cone. Mm-mm. Nope. No concerns. So we're just going to let you all in, you know, all four of you that are watching, we're going to let you in a little hint. Agent Cone is up to no good. Yeah. There's a and lot. Ken of and I do not have a lot of love for Agent Cone. I don't think anyone does. He is so just entirely creepy. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. And you will find that from here on out, now that everybody has been introduced to Agent Cone, from here on out, Ken and I will now refer to him as creepy Agent Cone. Yeah, most definitely. And, and that is a well-deserved moniker. <laughs> well-deserved. So... Agent Cone shows up. Now, Hale is thrilled that someone else wants to take Sons of Anarchy down. Right? Because he's been stymied by Unser every step of the way. So as soon as he finds out Cone is there because the Sons of Anarchy is somehow tied into this phantom investigation that creepy Agent Cone has concocted, Hale is like, welcome to Charming. Mm-hmm. And then it pans to our local postal worker. It's it's I think it's actually right before Cone jumps out of his taxi or his car. Um Oh, is it actually they, before? Yeah, it's it's as Juice is stumbling off. There is a oh, right, so it pans from juice, juice to the postal worker. Yeah, the postal Thank worker. Thank you for correcting is, me. Yeah, but go ahead. The the postal worker is picking up. There's kind mail. of a nondescript, kind of brown paper bag wrapping with I think some string tied around it. Mm-hmm. And it's a package that's addressed to. Oh, it's a package, all right. <laughs> oh, Frank and beans, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yes, we we've got clown Frank and beans, <laughs> right? That are wrapped up and are being sent to. Our good friend Elliot. Yep. Right to his house. So he'll know that, oh, he's. And again, I said this last episode, like that whole castration scene with the clown. Again, Kurt Sutter. This is all from the warped brain of Kurt Sutter. And Mm -hmm. only Kurt Sutter would then take it further by putting them into a package and mailing them to Elliot, where not a single word has been spoken, but you realize and you understand very clearly, <laughs> you fucking chicken shit. I did what you couldn't, and now I own you, bitch. Now I own, yep, totally well said. That was basically it with no words spoken. Yeah. Well done. Well, I don't know about you, Ken. It was a a difficult episode to watch, but detaching myself from the subject matter, I did enjoy the episode. It leaves me looking forward to what's coming next because you can really start to feel like that that locomotive that's leaving the station. You can feel the wheels turning. You can see the momentum being built. And Mm -hmm. you know that we're only scratching the surface of what's coming. Right. And I, again, I you and I more. have both seen the entire series. We know where it's going. Mm-hmm. But even if you hadn't, like by this episode, I'm in. Yeah. It, I think this is the point. You, you're getting roped in now. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's painful. Your heart's pumping. You can relate to what's going on. It's brutal. I, I don't know. Uh, to me, this is right here where you you start getting sucked in. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Which brings us to next week's episode, 
where we'll be discussing episode four, titled Patchover. Oh, uh, yes, Patchover. It's a good episode. Great episode. Can't wait for this one. In Patchover, we get a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there's as I recall. There's some great action scenes. Mm-hmm. There's some really funny moments. Um Agent Cone starts pissing me off. Ugh. And I think what becomes kind of a a major B storyline is half sacks going to squarely insert foot into mouth <laughs> and pay the price. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go back and watch this episode before our next discussion. But I, I can't wait to get into this. Let's leave it at well, that. That's what I love about doing this show is it gives me a reason to go back and rewatch these episodes, um, which, which I haven't done in a while, but I'm looking forward to where this is going. Um, and, and the amazing thing is, as we've talked about by episode three, which we've discussed tonight, like you're, you're getting sucked in and you're now wanting to know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And, and on a scale of one to 10, we're at a six Mm -hmm. in terms of what waits ahead. Yeah, I'd agree with that. There's so much more that happens and the bar keeps getting raised. Oh, keeps getting raised. Which brings us to our second most important question of the night. Oh boy. Second. Our first most important question was what were we drinking tonight? The second most important question is what are we drinking next week? Oh, great question. Well, I believe I picked this week's beverage. So uh, what do you uh, feel like drinking next week? What do you want to put on the radar? Well, there's one that I've been wanting to come back to that is a favorite of mine. Not so much for the bourbon itself, but the story that goes with it. And that would be the 1792 small batch bourbon. (laughs) Good Lord. Okay. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can resurrect that. Um, I think there's a story to tell here, but uh, we can get to that next week. Yeah, and, and we're going to save the story for next week. And, and I kind of, but not really hate to do this, but I have to share a little story about the last time we enjoyed the 1792. I'm going to save it for next week, but I'm just giving you fair warning. We're going to have to dust that story off and share it with all four of our listeners because this is one epic story. All right, let's go there. But like I said, we'll save it for next week and that is going to do it for tonight's show. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Um, I think the fun kind of continued to grow, at least for me throughout the episode. Uh, One final reminder For those of you that are watching on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe and do check out our channel for more episodes. And for those listening to the podcast, please leave us a review and subscribe to the show so you don't miss any episodes. But most of all, Ken and I would like to thank you for joining us for tonight's show. And we hope that you will join us here each and every week on the Liquid Courage Show. Good night, everyone.